Well, here we are back under the engine hood. We are identifying the ABS data link connector. I learned that it's actually right here beside the uh, fuse box under the hood. And this red cover actually says anti-lock test. So that's it right there. I already was trying to pry it free. I kind of like... Uh, Got to get that cover off of there and I have access to the connector. What I understand is jumping one of the uh, one of the pins to ground will allow us to put the ABS in the test mode. And we'll get back inside the vehicle and try and uh, see if we can read the diagnostic code that it's given to us. Yeah, so I had been looking under the dash for this test connector, this test port, under the steering column, driver's side. Could never find it. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to use a paper clip and I'm going to and I'm going to jump the uh, test lead to the ground. The ground is a black wire coming in the back, probably can't see it. And the test port it, uh, the test lead is an orange with a white stripe. So with the key in the off position, such as I have now, I'm going to see if I can insert those. All right, so that looks pretty good. And now we're going to go into the driver's seat and attempt to read the codes. By looking at the ABS light, which should flash on the dash when we turn it to the run position. All right, so inserting the key, taking a look there at the dash, and see it should be a two-digit code, so it should flash the first couple of the first number for the first digit, a brief pause, and then a another series of of blinking for the second digit. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna turn the key off. I'm not sure what I saw. I think I saw three flashes, a pause, and then three more. Would that be a code 33? I've turned the key off, I'm gonna try it again. Watch closely. Hold on. There we go. One, two, three, pause. One, two, three, pause. And then it just comes back on and stays on. Now, the, when I first turned the key to Ryan, we saw that initial split second illumination of the ABS light. But I don't know if that's part of it. I'm gonna turn it off and do it one more time. On. Quick flash. One, two, three, and a pause. One, two, three, off. And then it comes back on. Am I interpreting that right to think we're getting a code 33? Let's go look at the book and see what 33 means. Okay, so here we are with the uh, manual. Diagnostic trouble code chart. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. DTC 33 right there. Left front anti-lock brake sensor continuity fault. Uh-huh. So we're talking about the driver's side front wheel. Go to pinpoint test C. All right, so that's worked out pretty good. I feel good that we were able to identify the codes. And... Uh, now we're going to have to take a look at that uh, that brake sensor on the on the driver's side front. That'll be our next step. Making progress here. All right, so I've got the rotor off and uh, yeah, caliper sitting up there. And so here's the uh, a, the brake sensor. Um, also, what I want to do is test this sensor to make sure it is good. 
And you do that by opening it up at the connection, which is somewhere up in here. This, uh, this wire runs up under here somewhere. So I'm probably gonna pull this, this uh, down, this cover down, try to access it. Cause you gotta open up that connection and test the resistance of the two wires. So I'm gonna do that next. All right, so just one, two, couple of uh, Phillips head screws here, and I can pull this down enough to access the connector where that sensor connects. I don't know if you can see that. Boy, that's probably hard, hard to see. Okay, there you go. You can see that a little bit right in there. So I'm gonna take, open that up, and there's two wires that go down to the sensor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the resistance between those two leads. Okay, so I, I fished the wire down so it's a little easier to get to and took it apart that at that connection. So you got the two wires and what we're gonna do is test we're gonna test the resistance between those two leads. It should be within a fairly precise range and the manual is gonna help us know exactly what that should be. So here's the manual and we had DTC code 33 left hand front sensor and circuit. So we're going to connect, we're going to check the resistance at the sensor. It should read between 1015 and 1245 ohms. So we'll check that with an ohm meter, multimeter that I have. There's some other tests about the wiring. I don't have any reason to suspect the wiring's bad between the sensor and the control module. So let's go ahead and verify that the sensor's good by checking the resistance. Okay, so I had to take a slightly unconventional approach with, with these uh, wires. I actually stripped them, put on the alligator clips, and down to my multimeter. I did not get a resistance reading. Just show you. Put it on ohms for resistance, turn it on. And it's not reading any, it's not reading any resistance at all, which is making me suspect that perhaps it wasn't good. Okay, so here's the new left front wheel speed brake sensor for the Mustang. Just came today. And as we had looked in the book, or as we see here in the book, when you're checking the, uh, you're supposed to check the resistance of the sensor and the one on the car we did test, you should get resistance between 1,015 and 1,245 ohms. And we were not getting any reading on that one. So I thought, well, let's see. I got the new one here. Let's go ahead and see what kind of resistance reading we get on that. So let's, let's take a look. All right, so I've got, the, I've got the ohm meter turned on set to 2,000, the 2,000 scale. I'm using some alligator clips for the one lead because it's pretty tight inside the end of the uh, connector here. So keep your eye on the screen and see what kind of resistance reading we get at this point. Let me make sure I just get on the lead. There we go. It's 1,566. Well, that's higher than what the... The manual is expecting resistance between 1015 and 1245. However, it's certainly a lot, at least we're getting a reading, which makes me think this is certainly going to be the, I feel like it's still going to be fine because we weren't getting any resistance at all with the old sensor. So now it just remains to install it on the car. So we'll do that next. All right, so let's go ahead and install the new ABS speed, wheel speed sensor. So it's uh, this wire here, and you have to be able to get up under the uh, the wheel well area. Start back here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's a uh, it's a you're gonna need an inverted Torx bit right there to get that off, and it's not that hard, I don't think, to remove or install. It clips up under this here, so we'll have to get a Phillips head screwdriver right here and just kind of pull this uh, mud thing down. So let's go ahead and do that. So 
So that's the bolt right there. With the inverted Torx head. The new cable comes with connectors built into it. So this guy, we don't need to try and salvage. Broke off anyway. No problem there. All right, so kind of broke off back here. I'm gonna to have to remove the brake caliper and take the rotor off to access it, tap it through this way. There's that. So that clips up under here. So you can see up here under the wheel, wheel well where it, uh, where it connects up here. So we'll take this, take that off and, uh, and fish it through here. And it's uh, not that complicated really. Just hard to do while holding the camera and the light. <coughs> Ooh, uh, all right. There we go. That's easier. The other advantage to removing the rotor is so that we'll be able to put the air gap correct between the uh, the ring and the new sensor probe. All right, so. This guy's here. It comes through like that. All right, and I'll reach around with the, uh, and secure it in with that uh, inverted Torx bolt. And then we'll be just about ready to go. So there we go. We've got the new ABS sensor installed and uh hooked up ready to go hopefully that's going to resolve our problems with that code and uh light on the dash will go off and uh anti-lock braking system will be back in business okay my friends well we jump inside the mustang fire it up and uh immediately the abs light is extinguished haven't even pulled out of our parking spot so clearly that sensor was at fault and uh, it's been resolved that feels pretty good I'm sort of obsessive lights on the dash bug me <laughs> so we learned how to diagnose the uh, problem by reading the ABS fault codes without a scan tool we learned how to test the uh, the wheel brake sensor uh, for resistance to determine that the other one was bad and we installed a new one so it was a great learning experience for me i hope that is of help to you in your projects whether it's a mustang or other vehicle i want to thank you for watching appreciate your comments if you have any subscribe to my channel i've got some other mustang repair and maintenance videos on there and a variety of other things that may be of interest to you have a great day everybody it's buck wsr weezer signing off till next time bye bye